In today's session, we will continue to do the paper that we were doing in the last session. Uh, we were on electric charges and fields and we did till question number four. Five was a homework for you. Uh, but I did a similar question class, a tougher one in class, reader question class. Hope you have done this question. Anyway, I'm sending the solution after the class. Question number five. Okay, so let's move to question number six now. A charge Q is placed at each of the opposite corners of a square. A charge small q is placed at each of the other two corners. If the net electrical force on capital Q is zero, then Q by Q equals. You just need to know uh, Coulomb force equation. What is the equation for Coulomb force? Mathematical formulation of Coulomb force. Force between two charges. Force between two charges is given by K Q1 Q2 divided by R square. That is one thing you need to know. Second thing is, Resultant of two vectors is given by root of p square plus q square plus 2pq cos theta. When two vectors are added, force is a vector quantity, right? Force has a certain direction associated with it. So force is called a vector quantity. Anything that has a direction is called vector quantity. So when vectors are added, you can't directly add them like add them the way that you add algebraic quantities. For example, 3 plus 4 is always 7, but not with forces. 3 Newton plus 4 Newton. 3 Newton and 4 Newton, when added, may give you 1 Newton in some cases. If they are in opposite, act, acting in opposite directions, 4 minus 3, that is 1. And if they are acting in the same direction, that can give you 7 Newton. So that is my point here. Whenever you treat vectors, vectors have direction as well. Okay, so whenever you add vectors, you must use this equation. This is the equation to be used, root of p square plus q square plus 2pq cos theta. And the force between two charges is given by kq1 q2 divided by r square. Now let us look at the question again. A charge capital Q is placed at each of the corners. Look at this, I have a square here, this is a square. Okay, I have a square here and I have two charges, capital letter Q here capital letter Q here. I got two charges, capital letter Q each. And then what? Two small charges, small Q each is placed at each of the other two corners. Right here, I have another Q. I have another Q here. Now the question is what? If the net force on electrical, the net electrical force on Q is zero, one of the Qs, I take this Q. Okay, right. So I need the condition here. The condition here is what? You know, I need the force on this to be zero. As per the question, if the net electrical force on Q is zero, tell me who all are giving forces on it. You know, if I put my finger here, this Q is repelling this Q to the right with a force F. Okay. Similar way, this Q is repelling this force and this charge in the upward direction with the same force F. Why are the forces same? Because as you can see, the charge here is Q, the charge here is Q. Now for the for simplicity, let us take both to be of positive charge. I mean positive nature. This is positive Q, positive Q, positive Q, positive Q. Okay. Since it is not mentioned, okay. So I'll just I'll just put my finger over here on this charge. I'm going to find out the forces on it. Tell me this is F, one force, another force F. Why there are two forces? Because this charge is repelling this charge to the right, while this charge is repelling this charge in the upward direction. There are two forces. So there is one more force given by this charge. I'll come back to that later. Okay. And this charge is giving a force in this direction. I'll come back to that. For the moment, what is this EF? I can call it KQ Q by L square. If I take this distance as L, the force is K Q Q divided by L square. The force is K Q Q L by L square. K into 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0. Q1, that is small q. Q2, that is capital Q, capital Q, divided by distance is L square. Okay, that is my force over there, okay? So I call this F1, which is equal to F. And this one is F2, that is also equal to F. They are identical forces. I'm going to find their resultant. How do you find the resultant of two forces? Complete the parallelogram, draw the diagonal. That is where my force is, where my force is. What is that force? 
I can call it F12, resultant of 1 and 2. Resultant of 1 and 2. Okay. So, what is F12 then? Root of first full square, that is F square plus second full square, that is F square plus 2 into F into F into cos of 90. Why did I take so? Because I told you when you add vectors, you must take parallelogram law of vector addition. What is parallelogram law of vector addition? You know, you must complete the parallelogram over there. Parallelogram, this is parallelogram, right? Parallelogram. And you must find their resultant. Look at this. This is the diagonal is the resultant. Diagonal for the parallelogram is the resultant. So, right, this is my F12, resultant of 1 and 2. How do I find it? Root of P square plus Q square plus 2 PQ cos theta. So, root of F square. First one is F square. Second one is F square. 2 FF cos 90. Why 90? Look at this. The angle between them is 90. So, that makes it root of F square plus F square again plus 2 into F into F. 2 F square into cos 90 is 0. That will give me root of F square. This part will be 0. Root F square plus F square. Root 2 F square. That is root 2 times F. Okay. So, I got my F12. F12. Now, there is one more force given by this charge. What is the force given by this charge? This, this distance. No, I have to find out this distance first. <laughs> that is diagonal, right? So, that diagonal will be root 2 times L. Why? Because this length is L. This length is L. Hypotenuse is root of base square plus altitude square. L square plus L square. That is root 2 L square. So, if you take this, it is root 2 L. So, I can call that force by the name what? I can call that force by the name. Just give me a second. By the name. I am calling it by that by the name F3. Now, why is it in that direction? Because this is repelling this in this direction. Look at the line of action. This is the line of action. I can call the third force by the name F3. So, F1 was equal to F2 was equal to F. That is what I call KQQ by L square. What is F3 now? K into K into the charges are what? Ah, K into the charges are Q and Q. Q into Q by root 2 L the whole square. That is equal to KQ square by root 2 L square is 2 L square. So, I am so it is certain that so I don't have to find it. I can directly find it. I won't need this. Okay. That is to be done for another type of question. I'll tell you. Just give me a second. All right. So I'm going to find the net force. We need, as per the question, we need F net to see F net to be equal to zero. Force net is equal to zero. What are the forces? What are the forces? First force was what? Oh, F12. F12 plus F3 should be equal to 0. What was F12? Hope you remember. Root 2 times F. F is KQQ divided by L square plus F3 is what? KQ square by 2L square is equal to 0. Take one of the terms to the right hand side. So, root 2 KQ root 2 k q q divided by l square is equal to this goes to the right side minus k q square by 2 l square l square l square get cut k and k are cut q and q are cut then what 2 root 2 goes to the left side is equal to minus q by small q the question is to find out capital q by q so q divided by q will be minus 2 root 2 answer is option yeah. Did you understand? So, I will do this one more time very quickly. We have how many charges? A small q, a small q here and a small q at the diametrically diagonally opposite corner. So, at the ends of one diagonal, you have small q, small q. At the ends of other diagonal, you have capital Q, capital Q. And like I told you, we are expected to find what? The force on 1 plus q, big q. Okay, I have taken this q. I can even do this with the with this Q. But for the moment, I've just identified this capital Q. Just give me a second.
So I have identified this capital Q. I'm going to find the net force on it. What is the question? If the net force on Q is zero, net force on Q is zero, net force on Q is equal to zero. So I need to find the net force on Q. How do I find? I take the force given by this charge. If I put my finger here, this Q is repelling this Q to the right. That force is called F1. F1 is F. F is what? Force between them, right? K into Q into Q by L square. This distance is L. K Q Q by L square. Similar way, this charge is repelling this charge in the upward direction. That is also same. K into Q into Q by L square. So I have F1 to the right. I have F2 to the right. F2 in the upward direction. So I can find the net of those two. What is F1 to? I wiped it off. F12 is root of F square plus F square plus 2FF cos 90. This is called parallelogram law of vector addition. Parallelogram law. Okay. Root of first vector square plus second vector square plus 2 into first vector into second vector into cos of angle between them. Angle is 90 degree. Okay. F3 is not in the picture yet. Okay. And then cos 90 part is 0. I'll get what? Root of F square plus F square. 2 F square. So that is root 2 into F. That is F12 between 1 and 2 resultant. But there is a third guy waiting. This charge is giving a force, right? How much? This charge is repelling this charge in this direction. That is what I have written as F3 here. Look at F3 now. What is F3? 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0. That is K into charge is capital Q. Charge is capital Q divided by distance is root 2 L the whole square. So K into Q, Q is Q square by root 2 L square is what? 2 L square. So I got F12, I got F3. I got F12, I got F3. I, now that I got all the forces, I just try to add them up. So F net is equal to 0. That is the keyword given in the question. F12 plus F3 is equal to 0. How many forces? 1, 2, 3. F12, 1 and 2 together. That is F12 is how much? I told you root 2 times f, root 2 times f. So root 2 times f is what? f from here, kqq by l square, kqq by l square, plus f3 is what? f3, kq square by 2l square is equal to 0. Now this is going to the right side. So root 2 into kqq by l square is equal to minus kq square by 2l square. k and k are cut. And huh, this is l square, l square gone. You're getting what? You are getting this 2 to the left hand side. 2 root 2 is equal to the small q goes to the right. Minus capital Q by small q. So if I take minus to the left side, capital Q by small q is minus 2 root 2. Answer is option A. Question number 7 now. That is the most important question in class 12. Okay. It has already been asked 13 times in entrance examinations. That's very, very, very important. Okay. And for boards also, that is important. Repeated question boards also. You must have done this in school. A charge small q is placed at the center of a line joining two equal charges q. So a charge small q. So this is charge plus q. And this is charge plus q. And in the middle, you are placing a charge small q. In the middle means this distance is L by 2. This distance is also L by 2. Half, half. Read it again. A charge small q is placed at the center of line joining two charges, two equal charges, capital Q and capital Q. For simplicity, I've taken both as positive. This is capital Q, capital Q. Okay, a small charge is placed in the middle. The system of three charges will be in equilibrium. Underline the word equilibrium, the system of three charges will be in equilibrium. What is meant by equilibrium? Equilibrium means net force should be equal to zero. Sum of all forces should be equal to zero. Here the whole system is in equilibrium. Okay. They say that the system is in equilibrium. So each of the charges must be in independent equilibrium. Repeating the point one more time. You know, the charges, look at this. They say what? They say that the system, system is in what? System is in equilibrium. Equilibrium. System is in equilibrium means what? Each of the charges must be in equilibrium. So I take one charge and I put the condition for equilibrium. What is the condition for equilibrium? 
sigma f is equal to 0, sum of forces. So I put my finger on this guy, I'm going to find the forces on it. What is the force given by this charge? K into Q into Q divided by the total distance is L, L square plus. What is the force given on this charge by this charge? K into Q into Q divided by L by 2 the whole square should be equal to 0. That is the condition. I'll repeat one more time. What is given in the question? They say that the system is in equilibrium. System is in equilibrium. Equilibrium means force is equal to 0. Even hearing since class 11, equilibrium always refers to net force being 0. Okay. So they say that the system is in equilibrium. When the system is in equilibrium, each of these guys should be in equilibrium. This must be in equilibrium. This must be in equilibrium. This must be in equilibrium. So I take one of the charges and I put the condition for equilibrium. I, I took the end charge there and then I put the condition for equilibrium. What is the condition for equilibrium? Sum of forces should be equal to zero. How many forces? Two forces. These two charges giving. Right. Number one, the given one given by this four charge is what? K into Q into Q. Q into Q by L square. Distance is L. Plus, what is the force given by this charge? K into small q into capital Q by distance is L by to the whole square. So, should be equal to 0. Let us take it over the right hand side. K into Q into Q by L square is equal to K into Q into Q. Of course, it is negative. Divided by, what is this? L by to the whole square. L square by 4 goes to numerator. This is L by to the whole square, which is L square by 4. L square is on denominator, 4 goes to numerator. Then Q and Q are cut. Then K and K are cut. L square, L square cut. You get Q is equal to minus 4Q or small Q is equal to Q divided by 4 with a negative sign. Answer is minus Q by 4. You can even learn it by heart. The answer is this question is very, very important. Like I told you, it's already been asked 13 times in entrance examinations. Okay. For bots, if you are asked this question, you should show these steps. For entrance, you can learn it by heart. Q is equal to minus Q by 4. So what is the charge in the middle? What is the charge in the middle to be placed in the middle? So that the system is in equilibrium. Oh, tell me what? One fourth of N charge. One fourth of N charge. And that should be negative as well. Understood? Negative of one fourth of N charge. And there is a shortcut. Look at this for entrance examinations. You can use this shortcut. But this won't be needed for boards. Okay? Such questions won't be asked. Just imagine one charge is plus Q, second charge is plus NQ. Okay, one charge is plus Q, second charge is plus NQ. This was plus Q plus Q. They were identical, right? Identical, right? But for entrance examinations, you may have this question also. One charge is plus Q, the other charge is something else, plus NQ. In such a case, the charge in the middle is minus NQ divided by 1 plus root N the whole square. You can learn this shortcut minus nq divided by 1 plus root n the whole square. Minus nq divided by 1 plus root n the whole square. Let us check with this guy if it is correct. What are the charges here? What are the charges here? Plus q and plus q. So in place of n, what do we have? How many q's? This is how many q's? Tell me. How many q's? 1q, 1q, right? Simply writing Q means it is 1Q. Only 1Q is there. So N is 1. Let us put it here. N is 1 minus 1 into Q by 1 plus root 1 the whole square. That is what? Minus Q by root 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 square is 4. That is exactly what we put here. Minus Q by 4. Understood? Understood? See, if they give you plus Q and plus 2Q here, this is plus NQ, right? Just imagine they give you plus Q, another one is plus 2Q. What is the charge to be placed? Not in the middle though, somewhere in between. What is the charge to be placed there? You know, here the number is 2. So put in place of N, you have to put 2. In place of N, it is 2. So the answer will be this. You can keep it like this, minus 2Q by 1 plus root to the whole square. What if this is 4? One charge is Q, the other charge is 4Q. The number there is 4. You can put 4 in place of this. And then 4 in place of this. This you can solve. Minus 4Q by, this is root 4 is 2. 2 plus 1, 3. 3 square is 9. So, <coughs> answer is 
four q divided by nine. Is that clear? Anybody needs repetition? This is a very very important question. They are asking uh, to find you to find the charge to be placed in the middle so that the system is in equilibrium. When the entire system is in equilibrium, each of the charges must be in equilibrium. Okay. If all are in equilibrium, everyone must be in independent equilibrium. That is common sense. So I take this charge and I put the condition for equilibrium. What is condition for equilibrium? Net force should be equal to zero. So I, I simply add up the forces. What is the force on this charge? Force by this is what? K into Q into Q by L square plus. What is the force by this charge? K into Q into Q by L by to the whole square is equal to zero. So KQQ by L square is equal to this goes to numerator minus KQQ by L square into four. K is getting canceled on either side. Capital Q gets gone. L square is also gone. That is leaving you with Q is equal to minus four times Q. So small Q will be what minus Q by four. Never ever forget this. You can learn it by heart because this is a repeated question. For boards, you have to do the steps. Minus Q by four is the charge to be placed in the middle. And as a shortcut for a general case, you know, if that was plus Q plus Q, identical charges. No, what if an identical charges are given? One charge is plus Q, two plus Q, the other is plus three Q, plus four Q, plus five Q, plus N Q in general. So you can use the shortcut there. Q is equal to minus N Q by one plus root in the whole square. You just have to put the number there. If it is four here, four Q here, you put four there. If it is three, put three. Uh, though the null point is not in the middle. Okay, so the charge, the, the, the point, charge will be placed, placed, Closer to the weaker charge, weaker charge, Q and NQ, which is weaker, more capital Q is weaker, no? So it has to be closer to the heavier charge. I mean the weak, I mean the stronger, weaker charge, weaker charge. Okay. So question number, question number eight. Hey, that's a previous IDJ question. That's important. Two equal negative charges are fixed at the points. Read the question, please. Two equal charges minus Q are fixed at point zero comma A and zero comma minus A on Y axis. That's a uh, probable question. So, where are the charges fixed? Charges are fixed at points 0, a and 0, minus a. Where is 0, a? This is 0, a, location 0, a. And 0, minus a is right here. Look at this. X coordinate is 0, y coordinate is plus a. X coordinate is 0, y coordinate is minus a. And you are placing what here? As per the question, you are placing two negative charges minus Q. This is one minus Q. This is one minus Q, okay? And what is you're doing here? A positive charge Q is released from rest at the point 2A comma zero. Where is 2A comma zero? 2A comma zero is somewhere here. 2A, look at this. 2A, X is 2A, Y is zero. Y coordinate is zero means it is certain that it is on the X axis, right? 2A comma zero. Right here, I place a charge plus Q and leave it. What will happen to it? I'll explain the question one more time. I'll interpret it. Read the question again, A8. That's a previous IDJ question that got repeated later. Two equal negative charges minus Q each. There are two charges, minus Q, minus Q, minus Q, minus Q, are fixed at 0, A and 0, minus A. 0, A is this. This is 0, A. On x axis, 0, y axis, a. There you place one minus q. And 0, comma minus a is on negative y axis. There you place a minus q again. And then a positive charge capital Q is released from where? From rest at a point 2a, comma 0. 2a, comma 0 means what? x axis it is 2a, y axis it is nothing, 2a, comma 0. Okay. And then what happens? And then what happens? You know, the charge will do what? Let us see. I'm leaving this charge here. What will happen? If I put my finger here, it is seen that this charge is attracting this charge towards it. Am I correct? Am I correct? What does this minus do? This minus will, uh, this minus will attract this plus towards it. It's a typical entrance examination question. Won't be asked in boards. This won't be asked in boards. It's a typical entrance examination question. Okay. Because it's a multi-concept question. Uh, you know, this minus will attract plus towards it. And this minus is doing what? That is attracting plus towards it. So as you can see, there are two forces, uh, two forces trying to pull the charge towards them, right? These charges. 
what is the resultant of these forces? How do you find the resultant? Complete the parallelogram, draw the diagonal, draw the diagonal. So this will actually move in this direction. Try to move in this direction. Look at that, look at that. The particle will move in this direction. The resultant is in this direction. So what happens now? The particle will begin to move in this direction. So that will come here. Will it stop at the center? No, it has something called inertia. So whatever is happening will con continue to happen. That means this particle will go over to the other side. That will come over here, this plus Q. What happens then? This minus is attracting towards it. This minus is attracting towards it. Complete the parallelogram, draw the diagonal. So that is moving to the right. Will it stop at the origin? No, it will overshoot the position to the other side. Similar way, it will come back here, it will go there, it will come back here, go there. This is called, this is called oscillatory motion. So the particle executes oscillatory motion. This is called oscillatory motion. But is this simple harmonic motion? No. For simple harmonic motion, there is a condition. F should be directly proportional to minus y or minus r. But here you are talking about Coulomb's law for which force is proportional to 1 by r squared. So this is oscillatory motion, uh, which should be plus minus q. No, 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 no. They say it is plus q. A positive charge capital Q is released from rest. This is plus q only. Okay. That is given in the question. Okay. So this is oscillatory motion, but not simple harmonic. Simple harmonic motion means oscillatory motion itself, but it has to satisfy this condition. Does this, does this case satisfy the condition? No, this condition is not satisfied because we are talking about Coulomb's force here. Coulomb's force is proportional to 1 by R square. So the answer is execute oscillatory, but not simple harmonic motion. Option D is correct. You have to uh, put a correction there. Execute oscillatory, but not make it not simple harmonic motion not simple harmonic motion i'll explain that one more time then i'll ask you what is the question here there are two equal charges minus q minus q minus q and minus q where are they placed they are placed at locations 0 comma a and 0 comma minus a 0 comma a and 0 comma minus a okay and then you are leaving a charge plus q positive charge q right over here where at 2a comma 0 at 2a comma 0 you are leaving another charge what's happening to it tell me what's happening now that plus q that plus q will be attracted by this negative this plus q will be attracted by this negative so what is the net force how do you find the net force complete the parallelogram parallelogram completed draw the diagonal this is the net force okay so due to the net force, the particle will tend to come to the origin. I mean, I'm in the middle, right? Will it stop there? No, there is something called inertia. If you're traveling in a bus, when the bus stops, you tend to fall forward. That is because your upper part of the body has inertia. Upper part of your body has inertia. So that will allow to be in motion because that was in motion already. Similar way, this was in motion. It never wanted to stop. It will overshoot the position. It will go over to the other side. When it reaches here, that is again, this is plus, you know, that is being pulled by minus, being pulled by minus, complete the parallelogram, draw the diagonal, that would be the resultant. This is the resultant. So again, that will go back to the other side. It will try to stop here, but it can't stop. It is helpless because it has inertia. So it will go to the other side. There, it feels it has the same thing. It will come back to this side. It will go to the other side, come back to this side. So it is called oscillatory motion. Means to and fro motion about a mean point that is called oscillatory motion to and fro motion or up and down journey back and forth journey no back and forth journey it's going in the forward direction coming back in the backward direction going in the forward direction coming in the backward direction so it is obvious that it is oscillatory motion now next thing is to check whether it is simple harmonic motion it is not simple harmonic motion why if it is simple harmonic motion, this condition has to be satisfied. Simple harmonic motion. F is proportional to minus R. But unfortunately, here it is Coulomb force. Coulomb force in action. It's all Coulomb force. Electricity that we're talking about. No. F is proportional to 1 by R square. So it doesn't satisfy SHM's condition. So it is oscillatory, but 
not simple harmonic this is a typical question this question won't be asked in any other way if they are if they decide to ask this question it's going to be exactly the same question did you understand now next question is uh, the dimensions of half epsilon zero e square is this is a very very important question dimensions of half epsilon zero e square how do you find this you have to find the dimensions of epsilon zero first dimensions of e then then you have to put them over here but never ever do that because that will take at least three four minutes to solve understood never ever use this conventional method half of epsilon zero e square i'll tell you the technique b this is having dimensions identical to that of b square by two mu zero that is something you learn in uh, electromagnetic waves later on okay this is electric field this is magnetic field and just like electric permittivity is there there is something called magnetic permeability this is called this is written as greek letter mu mu zero they are having same dimensions which is having same as that of young's modulus same as that of bulk modulus same as that of rigidity modulus same as that of stress same as that of pressure 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 is easy to find out pressure is force by area force by area force by area no so what is force force is mlt raised to minus 2 what is area l square so let us cut l and l here so m l goes to numerator l raised to minus 1 t raised to minus 2 so the answer is ml raised to minus 1 t raised to minus 2 answer is option c i'll say this one one more time now this is the these are the dimensions which is uh, uh, which is identical which is same which is uh, for uh, given for different quantities, so many quantities, nine quantities are having identical dimensions. Look at that again, half epsilon zero e square. This is called electrical energy density. Electrical, if you want, you should write electrical energy density. We have derived this in school classes, half epsilon zero e square. Now this is called magnetic energy density. Electrical energy density, magnetic energy density, electrical energy density, magnetic energy density, then Young's modulus, bulk modulus, rigidity modulus, stress, stress is same as that of pressure, stress is same as that of pressure. Pressure is easy, you've been seeing since class 8, it is force by area. Force is MLT raised to minus 2, area is L square. Area's dimensions are what? Area means length into breadth. Length is L, breadth is also L, so that makes it L square. 1L is getting cancelled here and here. You get what L goes numerator. That makes it ML raised to minus 1, T raised to minus 2. ML raised to minus 1, T raised to minus 2. So let me repeat this very quickly. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, what do we have here? Look at this. You know, the question is to find the dimensions of half epsilon 0 e square. Dimensions of half epsilon 0 e square. Now, it is not easy to find out directly. So, instead, you use this technique. Half of epsilon 0 e square is electrical energy density. So, don't try to put the dimensions here, okay? This is having dimensions identical to that of magnetic energy density. This is magnetic energy density. Here we have electric field. Here we have magnetic field. Here we have epsilon 0, which is called permittivity. Here we have mu zero, okay. which is called permeability. Just like what epsilon zero is to electric field, we have magnetic field with mu zero. Mu zero is permeability. Then Young's modulus, bulk modulus, rigidity modulus, all are having same as that of stress. Stress is pressure. Pressure is force by area. Force is MLT raised to minus two by area is L square. L and L are cut, you're getting ML raised to minus 1, T raised to minus 2. Answer is option C. Is that clear now? So we can go to the concept of electric field now. What is meant by electric field? Electric field. You learn gravitational field in first year classes, right? Gravitational field. You know, we have just imagined we have a charge plus Q here, plus Q. And around the charge, I can draw a boundary like this. That is called electric field. What is the condition? What is the condition? If I put a plus, if I put a charge here, say plus Q or minus Q, whatever it is, that charge will experience a force. But if I put the same charge here, it will experience nothing. Understood? So beyond the boundary, there is no field. 
can you define field now so field is simply a region around a charge inside which a force is experienced by another charge a force is experienced by another charge that is the concept of electric field okay just imagine we can have analogy here just turn this if i turn the ac on in this room there will be cooling inside the room am i correct or if i keep the heater turned on yeah if there is a heater turned on you know there will be heating inside right but that cooling or heating will be confined within the walls nothing exists outside right if i want to if i want to experience cooling i should open the door and get in right right so this is like the wall understood this is like ac right so there exists a cooling field inside so basically electric field is nothing but a region or a space region or a space okay region or a space inside which if you bring in another charge that will experience a force okay for example if i keep a magnet here magnet now this is a magnet i bring in a second magnet the magnet comes closer 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 when it reaches a particular distance it begins to be attracted or repelled depending upon they are whether they are like charges or unlike charges okay but that that is to happen the second magnet has to come within a certain range that is called magnetic field understood a magnet has a magnetic field ac has a cooling field heater has a heating field a body has gravitational field similar way a charge has electric field or electrostatic field so there is a region i can draw actually it is wrong to draw a boundary like this why the field should extend till infinity theoretically it should extend till infinity if i keep a plus one coulomb right here in my room and another minus one coulomb on the surface of moon they should attract each other they should attract each other understood so electric field should like gravitational field electric field should extend till infinity understood it's an infinite range force but anyway for practical convenience we draw a boundary like this and would say that any point outside the boundary has zero field or zero force this is infinity this is infinity 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 for infinity you don't have to go to actual infinity understood theoretically this is wrong you can't draw infinity on the board i'll tell you i'll tell you the concept one more time look at this what is what is electric field again electric field is the region electric field is the region around a charge electric field is the region or space around a charge this is electric field this is charge okay i can draw a region around the charge inside which if a charge enters that will experience a force but outside nothing happens so my point is field ceases to exist at the boundary actually you can't draw a boundary but for convenience i draw a boundary and i say that any point outside the boundary is infinity so all the points outside boundary are infinity 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 everywhere field is zero 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 everywhere field is zero field exists only inside so how do you find field here there is a technique that is used across the world you should put a plus 1 coulomb i just want to find the field here okay what is my intention i need to find the field here so how do i find it i just i just put a plus 1 there and i find the force on it i just put a plus 1 there and i find the force on it. so how do you find the field i'll write the step how to find the electric field how to find the electric field electric field is a vector quantity how to find the electric field number 1 put a plus 1 coulomb put a plus 1 coulomb plus 1 coulomb is also called upc upc stands for what unit positive charge test charge yes unit means one positive means plus this is called test charge test charge is being plus 1 coulomb is used as test charge across the world by convention okay by convention plus 1 coulomb is taken across the world otherwise there won't be uniformity just imagine you're going to japan and then there you find something else as test charge that that's not fair right right this is why they are using this is why they have suggested a plus 1 coulomb as test charge across the world okay put a plus 1 coulomb then find the force on it find the force on it that is how you find the electric field at a point find the force on it so i put a plus 1 coulomb i'm going to find the force on it electric field what is a force 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 
q1 q2 q1 q2 by r square this is called electric field intensity equation for electric field density is what 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 into q divided by r square upc stands for unit positive charge unit positive charge unit means one positive means plus plus one coulomb so i'll repeat this one more time what is electric field again electric field is just like magnetic field or cooling field or heating field or gravitational field we have electric field here electric field is what just like a magnet has magnetic field a charge has electric field it is simply the region around the charge which i have drawn inside which when the charge enters that will experience a force but outside the field field outside the boundary field is zero field ceases to exist at the boundary field exists only inside okay but it is practically wrong to draw such a boundary but for convenience i'm just drawing a boundary and i say any point outside boundary is infinity so all these points are infinities and then second question is how to find the electric field at a point if you want to find the electric field at a point there are two steps to be followed step number one at the point you have to put a plus one coulomb why plus one coulomb that is by convention across the world we are taking by convention plus one coulomb upc u stands for unit p positive charge unit positive charge and then find the force on it you put a plus one coulomb find the force on it that's it put a plus one coulomb find the force on it repeating put a plus one coulomb find the force on it i've done exactly the same thing i put a plus one coulomb here i wanted to find the field there no field intensity this is also called field electric field intensity electric field intensity or strength electric field strength or intensity how do you find electric field strength you can put a plus one coulomb you can find the force on it then i put the plus one coulomb there i found the force on it force is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 q2 q1 is q q2 is 1 coulomb so q into 1 by r square and this 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 could also be called k so that changes the equation to kq over r square so this is basically what the force experienced by one coulomb force by one coulomb is e force by one coulomb is c okay what is what is e what is what did we call e force experienced by one coulomb charge what if it is two coulomb 2e what if it is 5 coulomb 5e 10 coulombs 10e so what if it is q coulomb if i place another q coulomb q coulomb so that will experience a force qe that equation is also very very important force experienced by a charged particle inside an electric field is q times c q times c i'll repeat that one more time you know what is electric field intensity here electric field intensity is the force experienced by one coulomb remember it is the force experienced by one coulomb one coulomb only one coulomb so force experienced by one coulomb is electric field intensity one pen cost two reals what is the cost of two pens two into two three pens three into two four pens four into two ten pens ten into two similar way one coulomb experience is e two coulombs will experience two e three will experience three e. hundred will experience hundred e. two hundred will experience two hundred e. So Q Coulomb in general will experience Q times C. Never ever forget this force experienced by a charged particle Q. Force experienced by a charged particle Q in an electric field E is given by F is equal to Q times E. Did you understand this much? So we have one last point here. This is called the experiment is called Millikan's oil drop experiment. Just give me a second. This experiment is called Millikan's oil drop experiment. It's very, very important. You know, it's a particular experiment that you do in higher level classes. You will hold an oil drop in space right in front of your eyes. Okay, how is it done? Just see this. I have, a, I have an oil drop. This is an oil drop. Okay, oil drop has just imagined negative charges on it. Oil drop. Can an oil drop stay like this in air? Can oil drop stay? Can someone stay in air? Stay in air? No. Why? If I open the window and jump out, I'll fall down. Why? 
If I open this window and jump out of the window, I'll definitely fall down. Why? Gravity is pulling me. Yes. Similar way, if this oil drop is sprayed, that will actually try to fall down. That will try to fall down because of its weight mg. But I'm going to balance it now. How do you balance it? I just keep a negative plate here. I keep a positive plate here. So this positive and negative will create an electric field here, electric field. Correct. So there is an electric field now. What happens? This positive will attract negative in the upward direction. Negative will repel negative in the upward direction with electrostatic force QE. Am I correct? Look at this again. I'm just repeating. If something is kept here, that will definitely fall down because of gravity. Everything is pulled by earth because of gravitational force. No, everything is falling down. So just imagine you are keeping an oil drop here. Will it stay there? No, that will definitely fall down. Why? Because gravity is acting. Okay. So if you want, if you want the oil drop to stay stationary there, if you want to keep it afloat, what you should do is you should balance or nullify this gravitational force somehow. You have to balance this force. When that is gone, it can stay afloat, right? So how do you how do you balance this force? You should think about different forces for this options. But since you're learning electrostatics now, electrostatic force would be the best choice. Okay. So how do you give electrostatic force? You just give charges to this, no? And you keep a positive plate on top. You keep a negative plate at the bottom. So what is happening now? Negative is repelling this negative in the upward direction. These negative charges, no? On the plate, on the plate. Those negative charges will repel negative up. These positive charges will attract negative up. So together they are giving an upward force. So what is the condition for balance? They are balancing with each other. Mg is equal to Q times C. Q times C. That is a condition for balance. Think of it this way. Why is it falling down in the first place? Because of gravity. So gravity has to be nullified. Gravity has to be balanced. That is done by electrostatic force. Now let us make some changes here. Have you seen this before? Mass by volume is density. Have you seen this? Mass by volume is density. Tell me please. So mass is what? Volume into density. What is volume for sphere? Every drop is spherical. Volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube. So I put it over here. 4 by 3 pi r cube rho into g is equal to q is written as ne. Hope you learn. Hope you remember. This was the very first equation that I taught you in class 12 into e. Now this is the most important equation in this part. Okay. From this, they may ask up to six questions. This can lead to different six different questions. I'll tell you those questions in the next class. I'll explain this one more time and we'll wind up for the day. This is very, very, very important. It's a reader question as well. Chapter and exercise question. Uh, it's a previous board question. The board question was exactly the same as the reader question, which was to find uh, an expression for a radius of oil drop. You can get it from here, radius of oil drop, oil drop. So this is called Millikan soil drop experiment. Millikan soil drop experiment. Uh, with which Millikan established the fact that charge is quantized. Charge is quantized. So look at this, the setup. An oil drop, an oil drop is to stay stationary in space. Our intention is to keep an oil drop in space. You can keep it, in, keep it right in front of your eyes. Okay. So you just keep the oil drop right here. All right. How, how is it made? To ha how is it happen? How is it happening here? How is it made to happen? I told you, I take an oil drop and I charge it with negative charges or positive charges. For the moment, I've taken negatively charged a drop. This is an oil drop, oil drop, okay? And then it is trying to fall down, trying to fall down because of weight, mg. And someone is opposing this. Who is opposing? Like I told you, if I keep a positive plate on top and negative plate at the bottom, negative plate repels negative charge upward. Positive charges attract negative charges upward. So the net upward force is QE. This is called electrostatic force. And if electrostatic force and gravitation force balance, perfectly balance each other, QE balances, QE, if QE manages to balance MG, that is where you have zero force on it. That will stay afloat. Okay, so MG is equal to QE. What is EM? Mass by volume is density. Cross multiply. Mass is equal to volume into density. Volume 
volume sphere no every droplet is spherical in shape so it is volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube into rho so whenever you see m you can replace that with 4 by 3 pi r cube rho so m is replaced with 4 by 3 pi r cube rho into g is equal to q is what ne charge is ne charge is quantized into capital letter there can be different questions question number 1 find the radius of oil drop question number 2 find density of oil question number 3 find number of droplets question number 4 find charge on the droplet question number 5 find the electric field required there is one more question from the next chapter there are six six questions that can be asked from this topic did you understand everything we learned today